Good evening and welcome to the relationship series of virtual conversation. Today's lesson is out of job title worshiper, understanding the position of worship leader. And we're looking in chapter two. As we peruse chapter one, we looked at what is a worshiper. A worshiper is a being created by God to worship him. And today we're looking at question two, where is a worshiper stationed? A worshiper is stationed in the presence of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We honor and extol you because you are such an awesome God. We thank you, God, that even though we are sinners, even though we have fallen short and come fallen in come short of your glory. God, you have extended the opportunity for us to have intimate and consistent relationship with you. And we are so thankful that even though we fail, that you restored us back in right relationship so that we could be in your presence. We thank you as we begin the study of chapter two for job title worshiper, understanding the position of worship leader. And we ask God that you allow our ears to hear your voice. You allow our eyes to see your hand and you allow our hearts, God, to receive your word. We thank you and bless you even now in Jesus name, amen. Where is a worshiper stationed? A worshiper is stationed in the very presence of God. Let's begin by reading the opening paragraph in chapter two. And it reads, we must remember that a true worshiper, someone who worships God in spirit and in truth, according to John chapter four, verse 23, is God focused. We honor him, we acknowledge his presence, and we worship him. If our worship is born from us focusing on anything other than God, then it's just lip service. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 in line, we learn that we can worship God with our mouths while our hearts are far from him. The exercise of worship can be performed by anyone willing to learn. However, the perfect posture of worship can only be obtained through a personal and intimate relationship with God. In a personal relationship with him, we begin to discover just how awesome he truly is. We develop a heightened reverence for him. It is at this point that we begin to understand that when we lift our hands in worship, we are entering into the very presence of the most high God. There is none above him. He truly becomes our only focus. God truly becomes our only focus. So we're looking at where a worshiper is stationed. And I wanted to talk for just a few minutes about that word stationed. When we think about someone being stationed, we typically think about them having an assignment. We expect that someone received an assignment from someone else who's in higher authority and they're carrying out the wishes of someone else. And when I was thinking about that, the very first application that came to mind was the soldiers at Buckingham Palace. When you look at those soldiers, you'll see that they're properly dressed for their assignment. You'll see that they're in place for their assignment. You'll see that they won't allow themselves to be distracted from their assignment. And it's from that that I glean the word focused. When we're stationed in God's presence, we are God focused. Focus is a very important part of us fulfilling our assignments. When you think about it, we're busy all the time. We're doing things all the time. We're thinking about things that we need to do all the time. Things can get us overwhelmed if we're juggling a lot of different things at the same time. Going back to the example of the soldiers at Buckingham Palace, 
there's nothing on their minds beside their assignment. They're standing there and they're guarding the palace and there's nothing else that's crossing their mind. There's nothing else that gets their attention. There's nothing else that interferes with their assignment. When we're stationed in the presence of God, we must take on the attitude that there's nothing else that can deter our attention from the God that we were created to worship. The benefit of being stoic like those soldiers at Buckingham Palace comes from a personal and intimate relationship with God. When we take the time to be intimate with him, when we fortify ourselves with his word, when we fill our spirits with his purpose, when we make sure that our focus is on him and we're prepared to do what he says, when he says, how he says, where he says, then we are God focused. Living in today's society, we have many things that are available to draw our focus away from him. Our personal um, challenges can alter our focus. Our other personal assignments can alter our focus. Um, the thoughts or sayings or doings of other people can alter our focus. So it takes that intimate relationship with God and the determination to please him to keep us God focused. The beauty of being in relationship with God is that regardless of where we are or what might be going on around us, we can always be in his presence. If we are spending that time with him, listening to his voice, hearing his word, hearing his very heart, it makes it easier for us to be able to recognize his presence when we're in the middle of chaos. It makes it easier for us to see his hand when we're in the middle of contention. It makes it easier for us to see that he's walking us through every challenge that's presented to us when we spend that dedicated time listening to him, being intimate with him. God gives us the privilege of his presence, but because he's a gentleman, he never bombards us with his presence. He's there, ready, willing, and able to interact with us. And he waits patiently, sometimes provoking us to reach out and recognize his presence and be intimate with him. When we've spent time with God and we've developed our stamina for being focused, it benefits not just us, but it benefits those that are around us. It benefits those who are watching us. God's presence is so powerful that when we tap into him, we can change atmospheres, we can change environments, we can change circumstances. God is there with us and he comes with all knowledge, he comes with all power, he comes with his purpose and his plan. When we report to duty as good soldiers, ready and able to complete our assignments in the places that he stationed us, we actually give God an open door to move in the place that we're in. Our obedience to our assignment enables God to complete his purpose. What an awesome partnership God has established for us. So we've talked about how God created us to worship him. And I want to talk for a few minutes about how our what determines our where. How our what determines our where. Let's read from chapter two, 
the next paragraph. This is the most interesting transition. Although we don't really understand how God can be omnipresent, we know that he is. Now the conditions of our environments become irrelevant. It doesn't matter who's around us. It doesn't matter if we're alone or in a crowd. It doesn't matter if things are going extremely well or terribly wrong. It doesn't even matter how we may be feeling or where we may be. Circumstances don't factor into when we can reach out to him. Environments don't dictate if we can reach out to him. We truly understand that no matter where we are, God is always with us. We can acknowledge his presence, whether we feel him with us or not. Isn't it awesome that God is so powerful that in being omnipresent, he can be everywhere at the same time with each and every one of us. What a benefit. Chapter two continues with, by lifting our hands, we give God the signal that we are entrusting everything to him. As a small child lifts his hands wanting to be picked up, we are telling our heavenly father that we trust him to carry us. We are really saying to him that we recognize and acknowledge his complete lordship. By speaking praise and honor to him, we make him bigger than our situations can ever be. We make him bigger than we are. We make him our majesty and we become subject to him. Lifting our hands and verbalizing our acknowledgement to God tells him that we desire to have his glory manifested where we are. With these two simple acts of humility, we establish our place in the most important position of all, our position at his feet. Isn't it awesome that we can, just as a little child does, lift our hands to God and say, Daddy, I'm trusting you to carry me through this circumstance. I'm trusting you to keep me through this circumstance. I, God, am trusting you to take me through what I don't understand, to take me through what doesn't make sense, to take me through what I cannot control, to take me through what's bigger than me. Because I recognize that you, God, are bigger than anything that could ever confront me, that could ever be in my space, that could ever contend with me. You, God, are bigger than anything I could ever encounter. So I lift my hands and submit my will to you. I lift my hands and give my way over to your way. I lift my hands and I allow myself to be guided and directed by you. God, I acknowledge your presence so that in being in your presence, I can embrace the fullness of joy. By being in your presence, I can embrace your full wisdom. By being in your presence, God, I can accept your truth. Being in the place where the enemy is contending, whether it's through others, whether it's through our environments, whether it's through our very thoughts, whether it's through those who are around us. We position ourselves when we acknowledge God's presence to open the door to everything he knows and everything he has. The most important place that we could ever be is at the feet of our Father. God is so gracious in allowing us to embrace his forgiveness, to embrace his righteousness and enter into his presence. In embracing the opportunity that salvation presents to us, we put ourselves in the place where we're able 
to access all of God. Everything that we need is right there. Everything we could ever want is right there. Everything that could ever satisfy us is right there at the feet of Jesus. It's interesting that as I think about Mary and the complaint of her sister Martha, that Mary positioned herself at the feet of the one that she loved. She positioned herself at the feet of the one who could turn her life around. She positioned herself at the feet of the one who knew what was best for her and wanted to give her his very best. A lot of times we find ourselves like her sister, Martha, extremely busy with the work, extremely focused on our busyness. And we can find ourselves jealous of those who've positioned themselves at the feet of Christ. Being jealous about someone's position with God never positions us closer to him. Complaining about someone else's position with God never gives us a hand up to a better position with God. The thing that allows us to stay at his feet is our desire to be at his feet. Mary chose the better part. And when Jesus received the complaint about his worshiping daughter, he actually said, she's received the better part and I will not take that away from her. When we take the time to be in his presence, not just read the Bible to see what he says, but to literally be in his presence, we fortify our spirits, we edify our stamina for our assignments, and we allow God to work through us like never before. Ministry has to happen in order for the gospel to go forward, but to be our very best and fulfill our assignments to the utmost, perfecting God's word in us comes through intimate relationship with him. Because God created us to be with him and worship him, there's an inner drive that will always send us back to him. We sometimes get busy with our work and we forget that God's intention for us is not based on us doing, but it's based on us being. God wants us to be in his presence. The more we lean into him, the more we lean on him, the more we receive from him in that intimate time, the stronger we are, the more efficient we are, the better impact we're able to have because he's giving us everything that we need to fulfill his purpose. Today, it's all about focus. I know that we have to handle the cares of life. I know that we have responsibilities with our families, with our jobs. I know that we even have ministry assignments. There are things that we need to get done for ministry, things that we need to get done for church. But none of it is as effective as it can be if we don't take the time to worship the God who created us. None of it has its truest impact if we don't take the time to be with him. 
I remember in English class as we were studying the state of being verbs, is, am, are, was, were, be, being, been. God is the great I am. He is the ultimate being. If we want to truly and successfully complete our assignments on the earth, we must be in the presence of the great I am. We must be in the presence of the divine being. We must be in the presence of our God. It's my hope today that as you listen, that you're compelled to spend more intimate time with God. It's my prayer today that you are compelled to stay focused on the God who created you. We have an awesome opportunity to be a light in a place that's filled with great darkness. God wants to ignite the world with his light through you. We can be the candles in the earth that dispel darkness for God. The, the caliber of our light is determined by our company with God. The longer we spend with him and receive from him, the lighter our bright, our light illuminates. The more time we spend with his word and listen to hear what he's saying about his word, the brighter our candle illuminates. God wants to magnify himself through each and every one of us. And when we yield ourselves fully and completely to him, we open ourselves up for him to turn that flame up to its highest capacity. Let God be the greatest influence in your life by allowing him to become your focus. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for opening the door to reconciling us back to right relationship with you. God, we thank you even now that everything that we have done that was not pleasing to you, God, when we yielded ourselves to you and asked you to forgive us, God, you threw it into the sea of forgetfulness. And it has no merit when it comes to your purpose. It has no value when it comes to your plan. We thank you, God, that your word says everything that has happened in our lives, God, that you can take all those things and turn them for good because we love you and you love us. We thank you, God, that you are establishing us in the earth to complete your assignments, God, as we yield ourselves fully and completely to you. God, we understand that every soldier has an assignment. Every soldier, God, has an assignment. And we ask even now that you open our eyes to what you would have us to do, that you ready our hands to complete our assignments in the earth. And God, that you fix our feet so that we rush to do the thing that you have called us to do with a complete obedience. God, we thank you and we bless you as you set each and every one of us up to be a light in the earth, radiating your very presence, God, so that others can be drawn to you. God, we thank you that you remove every distraction. You teach us, God, how to prioritize those things in our lives that we allow to get out of hand, God. We thank you that you steady our focus on you, that we walk to a steady drumbeat that is your purpose and your plan. We magnify you, God, as we move throughout each assignment 
doing your bidding with a ready heart. We thank you for the spirit of obedience overtaking us even now in the name of Jesus like never before. We thank you that we will not be deterred by the distractions. We thank you that we will not be deterred by the disruptions. God, we thank you that we will not be deterred by anything that's contrary to your plan. We thank you that you are uplifting your purpose in our lives, God, and equipping us to do the things that you've called us to. We ask even now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you give us the strident focus like those Buckingham Palace soldiers, God. Allow us not to be caught up in what's going on around us. Allow us not to be looking to the left or to the right, God, but to be fully focused on on you. We thank you even now, God, that because you have the ability to undergird us through your word, God, that we have a divine desire that chases after what you've already said. We have a divine desire, God, to dig deep in your word and to not just be surface. We have a divine desire, God, to chase after you, to chase after you to pursue you with a passion like never before. We bless you, God, that as we stand ready to do your bidding, that we quickly hear your voice because our ears are tuned to you. We thank you that we hear your voice clearly. We recognize your voice immediately and we move to your voice as you speak. We thank you, God, that even as the cloud moved for the children of Israel as a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire during the night, God, we thank you that you are no longer leading us, but you're behind us, God, whispering in our ear, and we are immediately following your direction. Thank you for being with us, ever-present, and guiding us, God, according to your purpose and your plan. We thank you, God, that you are perfecting your word in us as you perfect your will through us. Thank you for the cleansing of your word. Everything that's contrary to you, God, we thank you for washing it out of our spiritual systems. We thank you for washing it out of our mental systems. God, we even thank you for washing it out of our physical systems. We bless you for your word purifying and purging as it moves through us, God. Teach us to speak your word quickly, God into the atmosphere so that we're not just the thermometer that registers what's going on in our environments, God, but we're the thermostats that reads the room and then makes the necessary adjustments by your word so that change can be manifested. We thank you for equipping us, God, to be those thermostats and sending us to our assignments to affect change. We bless you even now that as we walk through the beginning of the year 2021, God, that you're solidifying your word in the lips of your servants and you're solidifying your purpose in their hands and their feet. We're walking with a willingness, God, like never before. We thank you for the blessing of your presence. We thank you that fear is not a companion because we recognize that you are continually with us. So there is nothing to fear. We bless you for building us and for building kingdom through us. We thank you even now, God, for every life that will be introduced to you because of our obedience. We thank you, God, for every life that will be changed because we released your word in their presence as we stood in your presence. Thank you, God, that every assignment is completed according to your purpose and your plan. And we thank you that every weight that would try to attach itself to us, God. Every weight that would try to slow us down, every weight that would try to hinder us, God, that you have equipped us to lay it aside. You have equipped us to put it down. You have equipped us to cast it 
a way so that it will not be an impediment to your purpose. We bless you and we praise you for the blessing of your presence. God, we recognize that we are stationed in your presence. And everywhere we go, we have the blessing of your presence and the power of your hand. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with you. Thank you for blessing us with you. God, we continue to yield ourselves to your will and your way as you complete your plan through us in the earth for your purpose. We bless you and we praise you even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining the Relationship Series, a virtual conversation, as we discuss chapter two of Job Title Worship or Understanding the Position of Worship Leader, book number two, of the relationship series. If this message blessed you, if this message convicted you, if this message compelled you, know that God is willing and able to stand with you as you stand for him. Let today be the first day of your complete obedience to him. Where is a worshiper? Stationed in the very presence of God. Be with the great I am as you're being with him, the great I am. Blessings.